It's time to put ourselves and the game's integrity to the test by throwing down the gauntlet and giving ourselves a challenge in a hardcore mode of Star Citizen. In this challenge, we're self-imposing some rules and playing the game like it matters, as if death would be permanent or a destroyed ship permanently lost. This is as much a challenge to ourselves as it is to the integrity and stability of the Star Citizen game. So we're going into hardcore mode to see if we can survive 10 days in space. The design of the Persistent Universe is that actions will have consequences. The Persistent Universe isn't a battle arena type game where you're supposed to infinitely and magically respawn until a timer runs out, or where death simply resets you back to some point in the game. Death or destruction of you or your ship will have consequences. Not necessarily game over, but medical gameplay, insurance, and other game mechanics will mean that those events will create a hardship to overcome. In this series, I'm ratcheting up the difficulty beyond what's intended to see if we can survive 10 days in space. Each day will consist of a two to four hour game session and the rules are fairly straightforward. We have to log out of the game and re-enter the game in our ship. If we respawn anywhere other than our ship, we lose the challenge. If we die for any reason, we lose the challenge. If the game glitches out and we respawn back at a facility, we lose the challenge. If our ship is destroyed for any reason, we cannot claim it. In fact, we cannot claim our ship for any reason. If it becomes unavailable, it's gone. If we are still alive when our ship is gone and able to get back to civilization without killing ourselves or logging out to force a respawn, we can pull out one of our other ships. We currently only have three at our disposal. The Cutlass Black and Prospector, which I bought with real money, and a 315P bought in-game. If by some miracle we lose all our ships and are still alive, we can purchase or rent another ship in-game assuming we have the money. Yeah, but this time I've got the money. If we get stuck in a cave and can't get out, we lose the challenge. Basically, anything that would cause us to die or respawn somewhere other than our ship, we lose the challenge. What if we glitch out of our ship into space? That's fine, Moby. As long as we can get rescued by a player before our oxygen runs out, we just have to play hardcore, as if everything is permanent. So what's your plan? I don't have a long-term plan. How much of a short-term plan do you have? It's more of a partial plan. I have part of a plan. That is not a plan. But I do know where we're going to start, and that is in our original Star Citizen ship, the Cutlass Black. If you had a Cutlass Red, you could use the beds as a respawn point and circumvent your rule about respawning. It would put you back into your ship. Moby, I'm surprised at you. Based on what we're trying to do, what you're suggesting would kind of be like cheating. My programming does not allow me to cheat. I can only devise clever strategies. Whatever you call it, we're not doing it. Plus, I don't have a Cutlass Red. And now that we're a little stocked up on food and water with a few med pens, it's time to go. I forgot how big the Cutlass looks after riding around in the 315P. I know, it's not massive, but it's got some size to it. Have you decided where we're going? Yeah, I've decided to just do some traditional cargo hauling. It's been a long time since we've done any of that, and being a hauler has a nice feel to it. Very freelance, not being associated with any kind of mission. And I think that idea of doing what you want to do is a core draw of folks to the game. 
I've also decided to start with a short, simple run. We'll go to Edmond, which is really close here to Lorville, pick up some goods, and haul them back to sell. They've got some nice diamonds. We'll fill up with that. And you know what they say, diamonds are a girl's best friend, right after an RTX 3090 graphics card. I do like the look of a bay full of cargo. I don't know, there's just something about it. it makes me smile and adds that bit of intensity that you've got a ship full of goods at risk. Hang on, Moby. I'm hearing something. Sounds like the engines of another ship. Look, there it is. We gotta get out of here. A ship that close should have shown up on our passive radar. Let's see what we've got. It's just an Aurora, and he's giving us the wing dip. But in all seriousness, this 10 days could have been over almost before it even started. But let's get these to Lorville and sold at the central business district. This in-atmosphere flying may be a bit slow, but it feels very organic or something. Like the immersion they're always trying to talk about. So there, about three and a half thousand in profit after refueling. Let's do another run. This time, we'll do a proper quantum jump and head to Bezdek for some titanium. This moon is very yellow. And very hot. Supposedly about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So you wouldn't last long without a suit. I'd be just fine, thank you. That's only a concern for your own fragility. All right, so here we'll fill up a titanium and head back to Lorville. Do you think they could have given us a smaller hangar to land in? They should know we're trying to do a hardcore challenge. But we've got it. Let's get these goods sold and see what the return is. 4,000, nothing spectacular. And I do want to make a ship purchase during these 10 days, but this particular hauling effort is just to get our feet wet. And because we haven't done any straight hauling in a while. It's not so much about making a lot of money right now, it's just staying alive and enjoying the gameplay. So sweetie, where to next? Let's extend out a little farther. Let's go back and get some more of that titanium, but this time, 
haul it to either Art Corp or Microtech to sell. And you know, I've been thinking. That's always dangerous. One, we might should start recruiting someone as a turret gunner and co-pilot from the good people at Reed. That encounter with the other ship could have gone bad, and a turret gunner lookout in a situation like that could make all the difference. Another is that every takeoff, landing, movement, and decision does actually feel a little more intense with this challenge. We can't do much about the game glitching, but I feel like here our own actions have higher stakes. I'm finding myself flying a little more careful, landing a little more precisely. All right, so they don't have quite enough titanium to fill us up, but we'll take what little laranite they have and fill up the last little bit with tungsten. Man, seeing that cargo bay all filled up just gets me every time. But let's get going. So where to? You know, I haven't exactly decided, but I have decided to take a chance with this hardcore mode and risk it all. What are you saying? I'm saying I'm gonna get into high orbit above the moon, completely into space, and log out. And hopefully, we'll come back in on the next session, all intact, cargo and all. I guess people will have to watch the next episode to see if we live or die and lose our cargo in this challenge. That's right. But I have confidence we'll come back. Overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. We'll see once we do day two. Night, Moby. See you tomorrow.